Hello everyone and welcome to Art with Mrs G. In today's lesson we fill a page with beautiful seashell shapes and colour them in lovely simple patterns and for this you will just need your drawing pencil, some coloured pencils and felt tips or you could work in one or the other if you don't have both. And if you've been lucky enough to go to the seaside and you have a pot of beautiful shells to look at and work from, do that because it's always best to draw from observation if you can. There are so many different types of shells to choose from, but I'm going to start with a little spotted conch shell. To begin with, draw the top and the bottom of the shell and then mark in the curving sides. After that, draw in the toothy hole in the middle. Then you can grab a pale shading pencil, pale beige or pink perhaps, and gently shade in the shell. After that, Grab yourself a slightly darker browny beige and draw some spots over the shell. And when you finish with the pale spots, get a darker brown and put those spots on top so you get overlapping rings of colour. Fill in the hole in the centre of the shell in black. Firm up the outline of the shell with a brown pencil and then use this brown or your drawing pencil to shade a bit around the edges to make the shell appear a little bit more 3D. And there you have the first of a number of drawings that will be on your page. And next up is the whelk and here you can see one sliding across the wet sand. But we're going to change the colour. Once again we mark the top and the bottom position on the shell and then you can create your bands or spiral layers going across the shell and then draw in the open mouth where the snail would come out of its shell. After that add the big fat side part to the shell, the outline, and draw in some lines going down and across the body of the shell on each layer. Shade the body of the shell in a nice pale blue pencil. Use a darker shade to draw on the lines down the shell. Use a dark blue and black to shade in the hole on the snail shell and then use these darker colours to make the edge show up and add a pattern to the surface. A lovely pinky red scallop shell next. Begin by marking the bottom on the top of the shell, then drawing on each side to create a sort of open V shape. Put the little fan sections on the bottom and then add all of the lines going down the shell. I normally start with five and then you can add more in between. Shade a nice gentle pink in the background, then grab a stronger colour and draw the lines on going down it again. Use brown to draw lines on the fan section below and use it to create two curves across the top of your shell beneath which you can put some pink. Use a slightly stronger purple colour to define the edges of the shell and make sure it's nice and clear on the page. We've three lovely shells drawn now and just room for another skinny one on the side. I've chosen to draw a thin spiky serith shell in this space here. Start by drawing the top and the bottom and then just gently mark in a finger-like shape to guide you. And then you can start putting the curves, the spirals, around the shell in. Add gentle curves to the side of the shell so the spirals really stand out. Shade in your chosen colours. I've chosen a nice pale yellow. And then use a darker colour to show the lines around the shell and add a bit of texture to the surface. Use a darker pencil to make sure that the edges show up nicely and add a little bit of shading. Add some curving flicks across the shell to make it appear more rounded and then continue to put some dotty texture on the surface because this is quite a spiky shell. Now I'm doing patterns on my pictures which are inspired by the original shells but they're not exactly the same. I'm using a bit of my imagination having fun. So you colour your shells in whichever colours, shapes and patterns you like as well and make it your own. A pretty little land snail next or maybe it's called a shark eye snail. Mark on the top and bottom position of your shell on your page then draw in your spirals very steadily round and round. Develop your shell in your chosen colours, putting some darker spirals over it and then your chosen colours in the background. 
This amazing shell is called a horse conch and I love the spiky bits on it. I've decided to draw it sideways on my page just to make it a bit more interesting. Working from the tip down, I gradually widen the shell in steps, then draw on the fat body and then thin it again to the tip. Firm up the spirals and the outline in a darker colour. Shade gently in your chosen colours. I've decided to use a little bit of yellow and pink. Our next mollusk has a tamper top shell, a nice pointy one. I gently mark on the top and bottom position of my cone and then sketch it in lightly until I'm happy with the shape. And then I mark on the bands going round the snail shell. I've decided to colour mine in pale blue with some nice blue dotty patterns on the surface. But remember, you can choose whichever colours and patterns you like for your snail. This next amazing shell is called a lightning whelk. And I just love the pointiness of it and the stripes along the side. And I'm going to take that theme and make it a little bit more tiger-like when I draw it. As you can see, I've decided to draw this shell sideways too. And I'm trying very hard to space the shells out evenly in their lines across the page. I've used reds, browns and oranges to add the tiger-like stripes on the side. I've darkened the spiky tips of the shell in brown and used shades of pink, blue and purple as well as black for the inside. There are so many wonderful patterns on cone snails. I particularly liked the heart-shaped white markings on this one. Having sketched in the simple shape, I then drew in the little heart-shaped white markings and then coloured the background in shades of brown. I firm up the edge with the darker colour, of course, before I finish. We couldn't draw a sheet of shells without including this wonderful nautilus shell and these creatures have been around for millions of years. Sketch on the smooth spiral of the nautilus shell, leaving a little eye space in the middle. Then draw on your tiger-like pointy stripes around the shell, which I'm going to do in purpley pink colours. Colour the eye of the nautilus in blue and put a black dot for the pupil in the centre and use the black to show where the hole would be at the base of the shell. Then shade in the background in a nice pale colour, palish pink I've done. Colour in your stripes in your stronger colour and then add a few little speckly dots on the surface of the shell. I used a red shade to go around the edges and make it look a little bit more 3D. I've chosen a common cockle shell next because I wanted another fan-shaped shell like the scallop. Having drawn your upside down fan shape or V shape, draw on some curving lines across the top of the shell. Then you can take your yellow, whichever colour you've decided to do, and build it up with brown lines and textural lines going across it and down the shell. And don't forget to do the wavy edge at the bottom. British people have enjoyed eating cockles at the seaside for years. They're often a bit crunchy because they have sand stuck in them. My penultimate shell is this one, the tulip shell. I love the shape and the wavy lines and I'm going to add a bit of pink and red to mine just to balance it up on the page with a scallop at the top. Do you know what the shells are for? They're to protect the animals from predators, strong currents and storms and of course critically to camouflage them in their habitat. Sometimes you'll find shells with holes in them, which is where predators have drilled away or chipped away to try and get at the creature inside for their dinner. Shells are really big business. The ones which are hard to find and very precious and beautiful sell for thousands of pounds. And the last space on my page has to go to this amazing spider conch. I mean, it's got six strange spider-like legs, which actually look a bit hairy, like the tarantula legs. The colours are also incredible, and the pattern. When you've drawn enough shells, and it doesn't have to be as many as me, then you can trim the edge of your paper off, 
and if you're lucky, maybe you'll find a frame somewhere in the house and you can hang it on the wall. If you enjoyed my lesson today, please like my video, share it with a friend, add a nice comment and subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.